This is Tom Motley. Golf on Sky Sports, sponsored by the new Big Bertha drivers from Callaway. And, and this is his setup. Uh, and he teaches a lot of elite players, um, which I've seen a lot of county guys, etc., over the years. Um, I've had lessons from him as well. And I grew up playing with him as a junior with me, which was, uh, which was pretty good news. So it's amazing to see how somebody can progress in golf from um, somebody who's a nine-year-old kid to all of a sudden he's telling me what to do, which, <laughs> which is infuriating at the best of times. Um, so where, where are we now then? What's this setup? Uh, this is South Cerny. Um, it's an 18-hole golf course, driving range. So, yeah, it's cute, it's isn't it? It's a nice setup here. And so how long has this bay been? been um, I joined here in six... This is my seventh year here now. Um, originally, it was a bit of a just a room, um, and gradually we've added stuff in and and whatnot. And it's probably been fully finished for the last three, four years. I mean, obviously, I knew you, but these guys aren't going to have known you. What's your history with golf? I mean, did your parents um, play or something? Um, like? My dad played. Um, I see who got me into golf. I yeah. used to play with him and on the on the roll up on a Saturday afternoon as a short fat kid. Um, played a bit. At, well, me and you played at Stinch for a long time and then moved over to Cotswold Hills and started to get a little bit better. Got down to three or four when I was about 13, 14, probably 14, 15. Um, played a lot of county golf, gave up for a bit, came back to it when I was 20, 21. This setup, you've got a lot of kit here. Yes. And you've got, yeah, we've got down, you've got the uh, swing catalyst, pressure plates. Um, and, and that's for, so just, to see where the pressure's going. Yeah, measure, measure how you're moving across the ground and the speeds yeah. you're, you're moving the pressure, which you can kind of add into elements with jet speed generation, how we use the ground a little bit more. And you've got the Trackman as well, which yeah, is uh, track the most popular on tour. And, yeah, um, love it. It's, it's probably my most used tool. Yeah. Uh, obviously, most swings are hit off the pressure plates, but I'm not always looking at that data generally. It depends on what the player's doing, how they're moving, sure. and if there's something we can get them to focus on via the ground, because that's the one constant we all have. We don't yeah. always have a golf coach, to be honest, but we always have the ground to feel. Yeah. Um, so if you can work on that and it does have a positive impact, great. Mm -hmm. But generally, my track man is my definitely my most used tool. Not just in terms of the the ball data; it's you know skills testing and, right. and measuring you know how a player is performing and putting them into some level of pressure, um, yeah, and, and, and whatnot. So it's, it's it's handy as a training is, tool and a teaching tool. Is that kind of m more specific to elite players, or is it general all of that? Um, more specific to elite players because they're more inclined to want to do it. Yeah. Um, whereas general club golfers just want fixing. Sure. You know, yeah, they want to. They want to stop their slice. They want to start yeah. drawing it more. It's they big want it a changes. And, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Whereas what you with elite players, they're, they're much more in the mindset that they've got to perform. Mm -hmm. Whereas I know club golfers have to perform, but you know, ask a club golfer how, when was the last time they did any performance training? Yeah, sure. You know, just some basic skills tests. Right. Ninety-nine point nine percent of them go. Yeah. What, it, what is it? Uh, yeah. Whereas an elite player will know it. They've, yeah. they've been through county sets where they've done it. So they've kind of developed as a junior all the way through the ranks. Yeah. So then they're used to doing that sort of thing. So they're more inclined to kind of be open to it. And it's productive training, isn't it? It's, it's oh, kind huge. of rather than hitting balls on the range, it's actually putting yourself under some sort of condition that you oh, might absolutely. be able to. Absolutely. I think it's important. But this, is, yeah. this is kind of a fake golfer in here. Yeah. It's kind of nice and comfortable, static environment. How yeah. many times do we get a perfect five on a perfect line oh, yeah. with no absolutely. wind? You know, absolutely. it's like once around maybe if you nice lucky. parallel lines and stuff like that. Yeah. So this is really where you go to, to make some changes, give some instruction in terms of what they need to go away and work on. Yeah. But as a golfer, look, there's two two absolutes in golf is what the club tells the ball to do and the school you sign for. Everything else is debatable. Sure, yeah. So, you know, my job isn't just to get them swinging, their swings looking good. It helps. They, they seem to be a little bit happy when they, they see that change. Yeah. But, you know, give me a golfer that swings it like an octopus falling out of a tree and shooting 62 all day long than a guy that swings it like a rock and shoots 82. Yes. So yeah, it's, it's finding that happy balance, you know, but to, to see the golfer play is, is, is really when you get to see the true golfer. So it's important, definitely. And what do you think, we're going to move into the media bit, which I know you don't do that much of. So what do you see um, the kind of, the goods and bads of YouTube, people who go to YouTube say to try and get uh, themselves I off? think that, you know, YouTube is a great source of information. It, you know, I, I, I spend a bit of time looking myself. All I, I, I like to do, see yeah. what other people are doing and, yeah. and, and I think you can pick up some lovely nuggets. Um, but for you, you're teaching gold. them obviously, you know what you're looking at. But for the guys, yeah, let's just say off a 20 handicap and he's got a big slice and he's going online, surely it's very difficult for them to look at YouTube clip and yeah, they get got a, much they, from it. They've got to know what they do yeah. before they need to know what they've got to fix. So you could back it up with professional health. If somebody came yeah. to you, then possibly, if they knew their swing yeah. characteristics. I mean, I've, I've sent people YouTube drills yeah, that sure. other guys have done. So look, yeah. watch that drill a few times. That's what I want you to do. you know. And it, it gives them some visuals. But I mean, I, I say it, I'd probably... 
I don't know how much I can put an amount of money on it, but I'd say YouTube keeps me in business quite often. Yeah. you got people out there finding information because they want to fix their slice. Now, you, if you type fix slice into YouTube, you get two million videos come up. Yeah. Now, which one of those is going to work for that player? Who knows? Because sure. they don't know why they're slicing it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, generally they go down a, a road they don't need to go down and then it's, it's left for us club pros to come and fix it. Absolutely. Um, okay, so the question that I'm after, I mean, that's kind of enough about you and your ethos, which is very important to people if they want to come and see Tom, which I would recommend if you're elite or otherwise. Um, you'll have links on, that you can go to uh, on the YouTube. But um, what's the thing that makes you most happy? What's the experience that you've most, like your most happiest experience? As a player or as a coach? I'm going to go for it. Well, let's have one of each one then. One of each. As because a, I must say, because as a professional player, I think things are slightly different because you can have a bad day at an office and make a lot of money mm. and uh, it's your job. Yeah. So it's almost like, I mean, who goes to work generally and has a great time at work? So it's yeah. slightly different. But yeah, as a player. Um, as, a, as a player, I'm probably winning my first professional event, down, funny enough, at Burnham and Barrett. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and I haven't done it since and uh, I haven't really come that close. But I'd say as a player, that's probably my biggest moment I suppose so in, in amongst that when you came off the course did you did you before you knew you'd won it unless, if you, unless you knew because you were a leader at the time you know at the end um, did you kind of go through the experience and think that was a really good day or were you thinking mm, I wish I have done this or done that or? no I, I, to be honest I, I played good I hold loads of putts and, yeah. and I kind of walked off the course and thought well you know someone beats me I'm great I'm, I'm well happy I'm, yeah. I don't really care I'm definitely going to pick up some cash for the day which was <laughs> yeah. kind of what I was there to do right. um, but, but yeah when you're out there you're just, you're just going through the motions and hitting shots and stuff and it was probably one of the few days in my golfing career where I haven't actually thought much about what I was doing, I was just hitting the ball and going. Right, but isn't that interesting? I think this is another kind of interesting fact um, that you've gone out and, and everybody tries to get into this bubble where mm. they almost feel nothing. They, they almost, um, if you can get on the first tee, tee off and then hit your last putt on 18 mm. and shoot a great score, <laughs> you're like, that was great. But how, how was that good? Because you don't realise all the lovely, you know, the beautiful things out there that you, you've done, you know, the, yeah. the, the chatting with the guys and the hitting the good shots and, and the experience. I, I know what you're saying, but I, you know, I, it's I, funny I how think, think. I think, God, I'm going to get chastised for this. Yes, I, I think, good. <laughs> I think the, a lot of people are uh, kind of brainwashed into thinking positively. You've got to think your way around a golf course. Now, yeah. if you ask any golfer, if you think back to the best nine holes, 18 holes, even six hole period, yeah. what were you thinking? Yeah. They go, I don't know, nothing. Yeah. I was just standing up, picking my target and hitting the shot. Okay, let's flip it around. The worst nine holes are 18 holes. What we think? I was thinking this, why is this happening? Really? Oh, my mates are going to take the mickey out of me. I can't hold a putt for 10. Yeah. Now, that is the same across every golfer that I've ever asked that question in here. Yeah. So it's got to be something in that. It's neutral. Right. Confident is, is just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. Negative it obviously hurts you a little bit and, and, and whatnot. But if, if you ask everyone, that is, you know, their, their dream rounds that they've played and stuff mm -hmm. like that, they're just kind of there. They're mm -hmm. not trying to do anything spectacular. They're just hitting the ball, picking target and moving on. And what goes through their head, they're not really aware of. They're just very neutral, just absorbing the thoughts. And I think golf psychology has gone down such a road where you've got to think positive, think you're the greatest part, think you're the greatest. Mm. But you can be the best thinker in the world. If you're terrible at golf, you're still going to be oh, terrible you're at golf. Bad. Absolutely. You know, yeah. So I, I, I don't know how you get into that because yeah. if I knew it, I'd still be playing professionally. But And you'd um, bottle it and yeah, you'd bottle <laughs> sell it, and it up. I'll be a multi-millionaire <laughs> yeah. and, and whatnot. But I, I'd just say, you know, just be be constant. Be, be in, the, in, in, in the now and stop worrying about what has happened or what might happen. You yeah. just got to, what's the shot I got? Hit it. Look forward to the next shot yeah. and try and enjoy it, yeah. good or bad almost. Every yeah. shot's the first shot you're hitting for the day. Yeah. It's just in a different place. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> and once you've got rid of one part for you, on to the next one. Absolutely. It's a fresh hole. Yeah. 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 I, th I think the, the thing that happens a lot with players is they get so absorbed in what they're scoring. Yeah. You know, if they get off to a fast start, they get a bit nervous. If yeah. they get off to a slow start, no, you just start it, just play your golf. Yeah. Add it up at the end. Yeah. And we try and we try and look at like you've already said about like target driven things like um, practicing etc. And how do we set targets on a golf course? You know, how do you go out to think I want to shoot sixty two? I mean, personal goals. You know, they, but those personal goals do that not put ed added pressure on you? Um, I think personal goals are about how you hold yourself, what you're doing. So you know, with a lot of the guys they talk about the process. They're yeah. just going through the motions, mm. their process to what they're doing. They're staying yeah. very neutral. They're not getting too far ahead of themselves. They're not getting too, you know saying right my goal today is 68 mm. but now you've just you've just put a tag on something yeah 
my goal is to, to, to approach every shot with, with a good process, commit fully to my shot yeah. that I've, I've picked. Do the best you can on and if I, if I add it up and I shot 62 or I shot 72, who cares? If, I've, if I feel like I've succeeded mm. doing going through my process, being kind of controlling what I can control, which mm. is me, yeah. not the golf ball, we, mm -hmm. we don't have full control of that. You know, I can walk off that golf ball pretty happy irrespective of my score. If I start chasing scores and, you know, kicking and spluttering and all the mm. rest of it and then trying to change swings when I'm out there I haven't stuck to my personal goal yeah. not my score goal I, I try not to kind of get guys to put like I want to be on European tour in two years yeah okay, okay. well if you if that that European tour in two years starts to look a little bit further what are you gonna get you're gonna get dejected yeah right? we'll get there when we I get there all that's a byproduct yeah we get there when we get there just go in, mm. you know fall in love with going uh, of the process of getting better yeah I'm quoting Jason Dana by the way <laughs> um, rather than you know I think too many people are in love with the dream and mm -hmm. the idea of being a, an elite top level player but yeah. the process to get there is so hard and you just got to kind of enjoy the ride while you're there and you, you'll get to where you want to be. I've not run a marathon, uh, you might have. I have, yes. And uh, it matters I think as well but I, I think that is all about the training isn't it? It's, yeah. it's enjoying the training, it's not the day. Yeah. I mean the day is almost like, well that, that's yeah, it. This is all the work I've is, been doing for the last six, eight months. Exactly, you know? and I think it's the same with golf, but it's a lifelong project. Absolutely. You know, each day. But anyway, I've taken enough of your time. Uh, this is uh, Tom Utley, uh, look him up, I'll put some links below, and uh, I thought that was really good. Cheers, Cheers mate. mate. Thank you. Next time.